Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are back working on the UPS van. I have a laptop and I have found the comms module, which means we are gonna hack the software. So let's go. Before we do so, I'm gonna unplug this and we're gonna take it apart to find out what is hidden inside. Time to have a look inside this comms module. Now, everything is gold-plated, which is obviously to help with all the communication and stuff that's going on here. That ye little yellow thing is actually a battery, which you don't normally see in all remote stuff. And this is the SIM card tray and holder with a three data SIM in there. I couldn't pull it out because it's got one of those adapters to allow it to fit all different SIM card sizes. So popped it back in, didn't really want to break it. Now pulling this out, it's actually two boards. So one of them is what you call a mezzanine board. There's a little heat sink there which supports this chip that's on the back just there. Now that rear chip is actually an IMX6, uh, which from memory runs mainly a Linux based system um, for communication and stuff. But obviously a lot of the display and stuff in the arrival van is actually running some sort of Android based um, display system. And then this basically pulls apart, well, sort of pulls apart without me breaking it. Somehow I managed not to break it. And hidden inside here is then a STM32 family, uh, which is a very commonly used automotive chip. A couple of other bits, and then the, the one with the white sticker on is actually what does the communication with the SIM card and deals with all of that comms. Now I have managed to get it to go back together without breaking it, I don't think anyway. And I'm gonna screw all this back together now and get it back in the van and fingers crossed, it actually still works. As I showed you inside, now this is the actual antenna unit. So this does our Wi-Fi connectivity and we've got our two channels in here, I think, and GPS for the SIM card and all the stuff inside. We're now gonna turn the van on and we're gonna get into the software. First thing I need to do is turn the main 12 volt power back on, which is the kill switch. Just there, oh, the handbrakes came on. I need to power up the rest of it, which is this one here on. And then you've got to wait a couple of seconds for it to be happy. And then you turn this one on and that should power up our screen. And it makes lots of noises and there's loads of clicks because the contacts have come live. So now this is on, what I have found is that this van automatically logs into a Pacific Wi-Fi network, which is called Arrival Staff. And it turns out every single van they did all log into the same network and I do have the password, I'm not telling you how, and it spells the word charged, but not all with letters. There's some numbers in there as well. That's about as much information as I'm gonna give you. Right, I'm not showing you the password, unless someone asks me really nicely, but what I've had to do is set up a Wi-Fi network for a rival team, and then these are the basically the IP addresses that come up. So this, um, this one here is the com devs link, and I now need to log into that over the web browser. So, which brings this up, because you've got to go to port, 8080 workspace, and this is the arrival software, which is interesting because basically all of this is kept on a web browser on that comms module up there, um, which is quite a really cool thing to do because you don't have to have a PCAN tool or any of that stuff. You can literally jump on it from a web browser to do any work on the vehicle. And then in here, I've got basically data on every single module in here, every single battery module, like there's loads, it's 18 battery modules, every MCU, every IO module, like all of them are within here. Um, and let's see what else there is. There must be something else up here. So that's the vehicle information. Barry apparently is its name. Some stuff in Untitled. Let me see what I can, what else I can do on here. There's a drop down here, which has device comms module, which is obviously the bit I'm in, which is the comms module, see, information about it and obviously more information about ports and all that stuff, which is quite clever. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, we've got network on here as well then. The cans, all the cans and the speeds to which the cans are running at and the broadcast rates, um, useful resources. So this is uh, probably telemetry information and other stuff, Wi-Fi information on here. Um, of like the the name and stuff, but you can't change the password for the login on here and GPS units all within there as well, which is quite clever. Uh, we've got CAN chart. So this, I think, is gonna open up a CAN chart. So it should show us every CAN message, yeah. So this is every CAN message on the vehicle and what they are doing in live sort of data. So here we have BMS mode drive. So it's actually in drive, even though it doesn't let us drive. 
and operation modes operation. Um, apparently there's no isolation faults at all, which is great to see. What other cool stuff have we got on here? Uh, no loss, like there's nothing, there's no big error codes on here yet. There's no error codes on here so far, um, which is very frustrating because I was really expecting to see like a massive red thing. Uh, we're at 418 volts apparently, and our max charge limit is 50, 51 amps, and max charge is 22 kilowatt at the moment. So there's all this really cool data on here, which you wouldn't normally get. So you can actually, in theory, fully interrogate a vehicle just from your laptop, which is quite a cool thing. The question is, if I try and put it in drive, do we get a change in anything? Apart from a really annoying noise because I plugged that back in. Um, does it tell me anything on here? No. It's not telling me anything and there's no faults at all. And it won't let me drive still, which is very, very frustrating. Um, Let's go back out and see what else we've got on this software then. So, we, ah, DBCs. Oh, this is clever. So it looks like in here, it has every single DBC file stored, which is all the Canvas data for every module already loaded onto this thing. Even for heat pump, everything's on here, which is some really useful information. I don't know if it will let me download the DBC files. No, uh, you can upload, but can delete, deactivate, upload, but it won't let me download them, which is, it's, it would have been great if I could have just downloaded them all. And then you've got another one here, which is control board, which has no data in it at all. So I think for us now, moving forward with this, the main thing is gonna be looking at the CAN chart and basically working through now every single component within the van over probably the next episode and work out how we now find out what's actually gone wrong. Um, I can also go into individual devices, I think on here, so I wonder if I can find the, that must be the master BMS. Uh, parameters, diagnostics. So I can do diagnostics on a master BMS here. And what else can I do here? System settings, let's go CAN. Get report. Let's see how long it takes to load. So it gives me a CAN report on different things, memory information, software components. I don't know if there's anything on here about, um, fault codes or anything like that. It doesn't look like there is. There's a huge amount on here that we can go through and look at and all these different parameters. I wonder if we've got the motor on here somewhere. Maybe I can open up and have a look inside the motor. But it seems to me that whatever is wrong with this is not throwing a fault code. It's more of a not plugged in or has gone pop. This seems to be the issue because there's no way of resetting um, all the different things. One thing maybe I had to do is activate and deactivate other components. But since I've been playing around this, I now have a motor malfunction <laughs> so i'm clearly pressing buttons i shouldn't be pressing but under motor control in here which is quite cool you can actually see what some of the settings are for like max torques speeds rpms and we've got their d axis their q axis which is all data points within the motor which was quite interesting to see um, from that point of view on the inverter um, we've also got resolver calibration which i think on one of the other vans i had that was part of my issue was the resolver was out of, out of calibration so you've got all that on here the only thing i haven't found is how i actually reset or restart components to fix problems. Not like on a, you get on the snapping computer so you can just go through and clear error codes. Um, I've not really seen anything on here. I do have a warning here and the name is dev error counter, but I don't know what that's relation to. I'm really hoping that someone watching this that used to work at Arrival on this may be able to reach out and give me a bit more information on this software, how it works and where I need to look. So maybe on the next episode, we can actually dive in here with a bit more information, I'm going to spend loads more time going for this, but it's going to make you guys pretty bored of me just winding through web pages. But I want to show you the software that Arrival has done. It's actually pretty interesting, pretty cool. It's nice that you don't need to have something to plug into it. And it's nice that it's all on this web browser. The issue is I have no idea how it all works. I'm just pressing buttons randomly and hoping that I find something of interest and don't break anything anymore. So I'll carry on pressing buttons and hopefully someone will reach out and help me. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Sorry, we once again, we haven't got the UPS van running, but we are on the right track now and we're finding out more interesting things about the van and the software as we go along. So please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.